the bar council of india has uh, come out with if i may say ground breaking and historic reform a notification has been issued by them thereby opening the indian gates of law practice for foreign lawyers and foreign law firms the notification lays down the rules for the registration and regulation of foreign lawyers and foreign law firms in india i have received several calls and messages to do a, a talk or a or a podcast on these rules and here i am bringing to you a mix of objective and subjective perspectives of these rules so let's start obviously these rules were formulated and finalized last year which is why these rules are labeled as rules of 2022 though they have been notified on 10th of march 2023 there is absolutely no second thought or opinion about the fact that this reform and measure of liberalization as introduced by the bar council of india is a, is a big leap and a revolutionary change from their earlier conservative approach however to me the rules come across as a half hearted attempt or perhaps too cautious or maybe an attempt to test the waters at the first instance be as it may i do compliment the government of india and the bar council of india uh, for this progressive and forward looking public policy now let me tell you about the key provisions of this notification and then you can decide on your own about its merits and and feasibility and and whether uh, it will attract foreign lawyers and 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 foreign law firms uh, or, or or not side by side i will try to give my perspective also on some of the key provisions if you get the occasion to read the notification you will find that the objects and reasons contained therein are very extensive and comprehensive there is an attempt to to justify the bringing about of these reforms the justification is as big as the rules obviously because the majority of lawyers at one point in time were up in arms against the entry of foreign lawyers and and law firms into india even the bar council of india confesses in this notification that it was initially opposing the entry of foreign lawyers and foreign law firms in india in any form the justification behind these rules is based on three factors one several judicial precedents including the judgment dated 13th march 2018 of the indian supreme court the the globalization of trade commerce and services and interaction with the let's say with the with the law society and the bar council of england and wales the concluding part of the objects and reasons clause says that taking an all inclusive view the bar council of india resolves to implement these rules enabling foreign lawyers and foreign law firms to practice foreign law foreign law and diverse international law and international arbitration matters in india on the principle of reciprocity in a well defined regulated and controlled manner these are the verbatim words used in the notification moving on to the substantive provisions under the definition clause foreign lawyer means a person and includes a law firm as well rule 3 is one of the most significant ones it allows foreign lawyers to practice law in india without getting registered with the bar council of india yes foreign lawyers to practice law in india without getting registered with the bar council of india provided one that such practice is done on a fly in and fly out basis to give legal advice to the client in india regarding foreign laws and diverse international legal issues two 
that such expertise or, or advice of such a foreign lawyer had been sought by the client in a foreign country, not in India. Three, the foreign lawyer does not maintain an office in India for such practice. And finally, lastly, such practice in India for one or more periods does not in the aggregate exceed 60 days in any period of 12 months. This provision is about unregistered foreign lawyers or foreign law firms. Now, what happens if a foreign lawyer or a, or a foreign law, law firm gets registered with the Bar Council of India? What are the benefits and, and you know, how, how does one get registered? Well, let me first discuss the benefits of being a registered foreign lawyer or a foreign law firm in India. Rules 8 and 9 are important in this context. A foreign lawyer registered under the rules shall be entitled to practice law in India in non-litigious matters. Yes, in non-litigation matters. The foreign lawyers or, or, or foreign law firms shall not be permitted to appear before any courts, tribunals or other statutory or regulatory authorities. Three, they shall be allowed to practice transactional work, corporate work, such as joint ventures, mergers and acquisitions, intellectual property matters, drafting of contracts, and other related matters on a, on a, on a reciprocal basis. Yes. They shall not be involved or permitted to do any work about conveyancing of property title investigation or other similar uh, works. They will not be allowed to do that. The practice of law by a foreign lawyer and or foreign law firms shall include, as per the rules, A. Doing work, transacting business, giving advice and opinion concerning the laws of the country of primary qualification. Yes. By country of primary qualification, the rules define it to mean a foreign country in which the foreign lawyer is entitled to practice law as per the law of that country. B. They can provide legal expertise, advice and appear as a lawyer in, in any international arbitration case which is conducted in India. But for a client which is having an address or principal office or head office in a foreign country, and in such arbitration case, foreign law may or may not be involved. C. They can provide legal expertise, advice and appear as a lawyer for a client who is having an address or principal office or head office, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 in, 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 in the foreign country. Uh, and And... Yes, but they cannot appear before any courts, tribunals, boards, statutory authorities. Uh, and, and, but they can appear before authorities which uh, are not courts and who are not authorized to uh, lead, uh, take evidence on oath. Yes. Now, they can also provide legal expertise, advice concerning the laws of the country of primary qualification and on diverse international legal issues provided that such legal expertise advice unless otherwise you know is provided in the rules shall does not include representation or the preparation of documents regarding procedure before an indian court or uh, uh, tribunal or any authority competent to record evidence on oath or preparation of any documents petitions etc to be submitted uh, you know in any of those forums regarding such procedures. They can't do that. So, you know, whatever I just told you demonstrates that foreign lawyers can open shops here, offices here, but these would be more like project offices for executing foreign projects, having nothing to do with the Indian laws. Or they can, let's say, set up sales offices for, for selling and marketing their practices back home in, in the country of primary qualification. To open full-fledged office, 
that 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 is not permissible according to me i mean you uh, it does not make i think commercial or business sense for the law firms if they were not to be allowed to do that rule 8 says that the advocate who is enrolled with the bar council in india uh, with any state or and who is a partner or associate with the foreign law firm registered in india they can take only non litigious matters and can advise on issues relating to countries other than the indian laws i mean, such a lawyer shall have no advantage right of his being an advocate enrolled in india that is recorded in the rules so basically an indian advocate joining a foreign law firm in india would in a way lose the power and privilege of his advocacy license why 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 would he join and and why would anybody take him or her because there is no benefit but i would say there is rather a disqualification attached to an indian advocate joining a foreign law firm because he will become disabled to practice indian law rule 9 says that the registered foreign lawyer or foreign law firm shall be entitled to open a law office or offices in india for carrying uh, carrying on law practice in india which i had mentioned earlier in in the talk these foreign outfits can freely engage and procure legal expertise advice from indian advocates in india on any subject relating to indian laws now my understanding is that an indian advocate can advise them on indian laws only if he or she does not join them as a partner or associate but that arrangement of arms length distance is happening even now so how does this these new set of rules help on the contrary they cause some kind of confusion or disability some clarity is definitely required on the aspect of indian lawyers joining foreign law firms and those advising from outside there is lack of clarity on that particular arrangement now in so far as the whole process of registration is concerned the whole procedure and requirement of documents appear to be very tedious according to me and there is no stipulated timeline within which the application of registration may be dealt with cleared approved or declined as the case may be by the bar council there are no timelines defined now as per rule 4 if foreign lawyer or a foreign law firm may apply for registration along with the registration fee and guarantee amount or security deposit the the application shall be accompanied by a set of documents which requirement you know in my opinion is contrary to the single window clearance regime the applicant is required to submit a a no objection certificate from from the government of india uh ministry of law and justice and ministry of external affairs and trade in india however the bar council of india may seek any additional information as well from any departments ministries of any foreign countries now this means the involvement of multiple agencies which in a way defeats the whole purpose of reforms apart from the above mentioned you know facts uh, the applicants are required to submit several other certificates from their home country from their governments and other competent authorities and including one such reciprocity reciprocity beg your pardon certificate to be issued by their government that advocates enrolled under the indian advocates act 1961 are permitted to practice law in their country so they need to give a reciprocity certificate also issued by their government now in total i calculated the applicant is required to submit seven certificates and about five declarations and undertakings further the stipulated fee to be paid at the time of registration is according to me on the higher side which indicates that foreign lawyers only from the west or highly developed nations are welcome or perhaps uh, the idea is to get minimal requests the kind of this kind of fee is not suited for young foreign lawyers or smaller smaller law firms or foreign lawyers belonging to developing nations this this reform will enrich already rich foreign lawyers the fee plus security deposit ranges between us dollar 40000 to 90000 dollars that is 33 to 75 lakhs 
And interestingly, the prescribed fee is in US dollars instead of Indian rupees. So I don't know the logic. The, the registration fee, the, sorry, the, beg your pardon, the registration shall be valid only for five years and the foreign lawyer and law firms would be required to renew it by applying for renewal uh, within six months before the, uh, before the validity expires. And the process of renewal is as rigorous as the initial registration. Now, my take is that this is a much needed reform. It is a step in the, in the right direction, undoubtedly. But, but we are still not halfway there. The destination is still far, though the journey has been.